Now let's carry the role model thing further. What we've covered now is that you're supposed to regard yourself as a role model. We started the whole thing off with what role and what model are the role models in the Bible so that you understand what kind of context the word role model should be viewed um, for purposes of your living your spiritual life before God. Because you can't live the spiritual life if you're not learning and living on Bible. And we found out two different kinds of things. We found out that the heroes of the Bible um, are depicted by God in the Bible as basically having split personalities, all of them, except for Christ, of course. And the split personality was essentially Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Dr. Jekyll, when you're in fellowship and you're getting filled up with Bible, that's the first you. The second you, which is the same you in a kind of hypostasis. Uh, hupo means under, stasis means standing. So think of it as understanding, okay? Or standing under, really. That's the literal meaning of it. So the real you is standing under the Bible. That's the way it's supposed to be. But you can't be standing under the Bible until you have Bible understanding. So that's what we see the story in the Bible, of the Bible so-called heroes, is that they're just ordinary like you and me. They have their flaws, and that's the real them. Abraham's flaw was he lied about his wife. I mean, he had lots of flaws, but that was one of them. Fear. Fear was, was fear and manipulation were two of Abraham's primary soul characteristics that were flaws. Those, you know, tragic flaw is always a big theme in drama, and God is, of course, the inventor of drama. And so he's showing Abraham's two tragic flaws were fear, and therefore he lied. Okay? So, and manipulation, because manipulation is a product of fear. Now, those were Abraham's flaws. That was Abraham without God. Abraham with God, well, he believed in the Lord, and that credited to his account as righteousness. Therefore, righteous in the Old Testament means believer. It's another word for believer. And that's Genesis 15, 6 for Abraham. Abraham without God and Abraham with God. Abraham without God, he listens to his wife, just like Adam did. Okay? Abraham with God, he listens to God. So you either listen to God or you listen to people. You listen to God or you listen to yourself. That's the battle of integration. Who do you integrate with? And it's a moment-by-moment -moment battle. So you got Abraham, that was his flaw. David's flaw was kind of similar. David had a weakness for the ladies. He also had a weakness for God. So you see in David in particular how God filling him up with Bible affected his personality, but you also saw David being out of fellowship, so much so that he almost died. And that was in uh, 1 Kings um, First Kings chapter 1. That's what the problem is. I mean, he almost lost the kingdom a, a third time because of that. Um... So you got that kind of thing going on. Moses, the same thing. Moses, it's a little bit harder to, to track the arrogance in Moses. It was occasional, and and God really hit him hard when he did it. You know, he was arrogant when God said, Speak for me, and Abraham, uh, Moses said, Oh, I can't talk. This is one of the most eloquent men in all history. He's the guy God employed to write the first five books of the Bible. And once you see the Hebrew, you're blown away. That's why I, I did the Hebrew meters so you could see just how beautifully he worded it. Okay? And and this is a guy who's got who's who was groomed to be Pharaoh, so he was groomed in language, he was groomed in leadership, he was groomed in eloquence, and then he has the nerve to say to God that he can't talk. And so God punishes him. Okay, I'll appoint Aaron. Of course God foreknew all this. And by doing that, God is showing you the principle of the separation of church and state. Because Aaron was the brother of Moses. But it was only through Aaron's family that the priests ran. And Moses handled the civil land, even though they're brothers. Moses didn't get to be a priest. Okay? That's real important to understand. Because you got ding-dongs like Raphael Cruz running around saying that there is not supposed to be separation of church and state. Well, that was what the pagans all did, is they joined church and state. God separated them to show what ideal government should be like. 
And thank God every constitution on the planet today is patterned after the Mosaic Law, whether it knows it or not. Separation of church and state. Well, yeah, except for the stupid Islamists, but you know, they, they're anti-God anyhow. All right, they're anti-Bible. Instead of Bible, they have the Quran. Even though the Quran says the Bible really comes from God, but that I digress. The point is, is that in the Bible, you have this presentation of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Every single Bible hero, you got what God's doing to you, and then you got their own flaws that are coming up. So then, what accounts for? What accounts for? role model is shown on the positive side by means of all those those heroes who were unfortunately putting on pedestals not learning the real lesson because every characteristic in you is going to be reflected in the Bible so when you read a story about David or Moses or Abraham for example you're gonna see oh I'm like that or I should be like that if it's an I should be then that's, of course, you know what Bible should be doing to you that you recognize it's, you're not there yet, but you need to go there. You see the point? The flip side of that was Satan. He was the first guy chronologically. Okay? And he failed in his spiritual growth. So that's why he sinned. And this whole thing is really between Satan and the Lord Jesus Christ. Satan fell, so now the Lord Jesus Christ, it becomes the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, he's already the Lord. Then he becomes Jesus the Christ to take over the role that Satan was supposed to have. That's why he inherits the Morning Star title in his humanity. It's a really big story, and it's a story that the pulpits aren't telling. Okay? And that's what the book of Hebrews is trying to explain in chapters 1 through 4, is that he came lower than angels. That's a snipe at Satan. And it even says so. He came lower than angels to defeat Satan. That's a Psalm 110 quoted in the passage. And, and therefore inherits the Morning Star title. Okay. So now there's you. And you draw your lessons from where Satan failed. You draw your lessons from where believers in the Old and New Testament failed, including Paul. Paul's big failure was that he wanted to be an apostle to the Jews, and God said no. Okay? And Moses' big failure was that he struck the rock a second time. That was his biggest failure at the end of his life when he was already mature. Already had written, well, well no, he hadn't written scripture yet. God gave him scripture as it were as a consolation prize, which is kind of interesting story there. Because he wrote scripture, he wrote the first five books in the last year of his life. According to the meter in Genesis 1, which I've already posted. He was 119 years old when he did that. So, you got that kind of thing going on in the Bible that you can look at and say, okay, this is my life. That part I've already covered. I've also already covered how when you're going through your life on a daily basis, you're supposed to say, what am I learning in the activity that I'm doing? Okay? What, what of the lessons, so I get more Bible in me, get more Bible in me, get more Bible in me. Okay? God's putting the Bible in you when you're between sins and you're studying under whoever's your right teacher and you're learning and living on that material. That's a 24 seven job but there's another element to it which is the topic of this audio it's not only what am I learning from it for about myself for myself in order to be a king but there's also a lateral application I didn't discuss because I didn't think about it until today and that is what am I learning about the world because what God does with this as he's putting the Bible in you he's showing you laterally how the Bible is being illustrated by whatever is happening in your life that day. And one of the things that triggered this audio was that every once in a while I get into, a, like, I don't know, hunger for pork. It doesn't happen often. But every once in a while I just got to have some pork. And I think I last had pork like a couple of years ago. And so yesterday I went to the store and I got a big pork roast. 
and it's cooking now and I was just taking it out of the oven to turn it around and cut it up and stuff like that to get it to cook faster and um, as I was doing that he hits me with the fact that as a believer in Christ growing in Christ in God's system probably part of Jeshurun which is the last ditch group okay to keep the United States held together my putting that picking up that roast out of the oven was more important than all the politics going on in the world right now and today is January 22nd 2016 I think might be the 23rd that's the that was the hit he's 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 playing the game of sterile bearing kids because obviously you know what can I call myself but sterile and Obviously, as a human being, what am I in nothing? Obviously, what am I in society and nothing? And yet, all these really important people who are doing great things and shaping the future and all that stuff according to what the world thinks, God is saying they're nothing. The believer in Jesus Christ who's growing in Christ is more important than all of them put together. So the menial things that you might be doing, if you're in the Spirit, are more important than all the stuff that's going on out there now. Notice how that hit with that thought joins the vertical role of kingship that you're in training for and joins it laterally to the outside. Because while I was moving the roast, I had on I've got on the TV about the politics. Because I'm, you know, I've already decided I'm not voting for Trump. I've already decided I'm not voting for Cruz. They're covered by the Dominionists, so that makes them satanic and in God's eyes out. And he already proved that when he caused, you know, well not caused, but showed Donald Trump m reversing the meaning of Second Corinthians three when he was trying to, you know, go to bed with the Liberty University people in his speech, and that U Liberty University speech is in the Frank Forum pages on Trump. So I know Trump is wrong. God voted against him. Satan's voting for him. I know Cruz is wrong. Sa Cruz is a sitting senator, so he shouldn't be running in the first place. That's your big hint. He's being immoral. And he's a dominionist. His dad is just constantly spouting the dominionist doctrine. Okay, well, that's Antichrist all the way. And that's 99% of Christianity right there. 99% of Christianity, Catholics, Calvinists, JW, SDA, Mormon, you name it, they're all busy trying to bring Christ back by creating a Christian nation. Christ said, my kingdom is not of this world. What's so hard to understand about that? This world does, belongs to Satan, not Christ. We are being saved out from this world. We do not belong in this world. John 17, go look. And yet all the Christians ignore everything Christ said. And they're pro-lifers. That's why. They're anti-Semitic. That's why. You can't be dominionist without being anti-Semitic. Because dominionism says that Israel has no future. And Ted Cruz pretends to be for Israel. He's real hypocritical about it. But his dad is constantly saying that, oh, we bring Christ back. And we're the kings bringing the money to the priests. Huh? Every believer is a priest. Did he miss Second Peter, one, First Peter, two, two five and nine, or Second Peter two five and nine? Holy nation is the passage, and it, the, the two verses are real close to each other. What do Christians not have the same Bible I do? Apparently not. So I was watching the politics because I'm I'm probably going to vote for Jeb Bush. But, you know, he's pro-life too, which means he wouldn't know the Bible if it bit him either. So it's like, it's a Hobson's choice. Hobson's choice means that you're choosing between evil A, evil one, and evil two. And you don't have any other choices given to you. Which evil do you pick? Well, the answer is you can pick neither one, but you got to vote. See, this is a king's, the king's loss situation. Whatever decision you make is going to be a loss. That's what kingship is. So he's he's training the vertical and the horizontal at the same time. Because if I vote for God, no matter who I have to vote for in the actual election, then God will make whoever gets voted for 
do the job God wants. Because I'm voting for God. Not because of them and not because of their votes. See how important this is? So while I'm doing a stupid pork roast. Pork. You know what that means in the Old Testament, right? That's what's so hysterical about him hitting me with this. I almost never eat pork roast. It's like every couple of years I get a craving. So I'm taking it out and he hits me with this. When I'm taking out a pork roast. You see the point? Isn't that clever of God to pick that? So that's the kind of thing. Just wait. He'll do it to you. Okay? I mean, this is this is his policy with anybody. Once you've got enough Bible doctrine in you, he can hit you with points. And he'll cause you to immediately know, you know, the, the tie together. You know, the meaning. As he hits you with it. Because that's the way kingship is supposed to work. So that when you're in the eternal state, he's going to hit you with stuff all the time. And all the time you're going to be going out lateral to your people. So now you're going out lateral to the world to know what the meaning of the world is. So that you know, okay, I don't need to get all upset about the fact that my fellow believers are all satanic. Because they really are. The believers are the most deluded. You know, you're non-believing you're non-Christian, you're non-believing um, conservatives recognize that Trump is terrible. They recognize Cruz is terrible. Okay, they just know. So take that and, you know, play with it a little bit. Ask God, okay, God, you know, this is what Brainout said. Show it to me how it applies to me. Because, you know, it's going to apply to you similarly and yet, you know, uniquely. So how does it apply to you? Go ask him, okay? Peace out.